Okay, this is 9.2, demonstrating invalidity. This is basically the same process as truth tables from the first test. But in addition to doing truth tables, we have to do something to get ready to do the truth tables. And that new something is expanding. So the first thing we're going to talk about is expanding uh, an ex a quantified statement. And then we're going to talk about how to do the truth tables. So let's practice expanding a bunch of these quantified statements. So our most basic quantified statement, right, is just a one little letter, uh, uh, universal or existential. So the way we expand a universal is uh, the exact same the way we expand an existential if it's a one element universe. And so basically, we pretend that there's only one person in the whole universe. We'll call it A, or Abby, right? Name that starts with A. So if I want to say that everyone is fun, right? X is fun and F, uh, X stands for everyone. If I want to say that, then uh, I would have to say uh, Mark is fun and Tammy's fun and blah, blah, blah. I'll name every single person and, and, and. But if there's only one person in my universe, the same thing as saying Abby is, uh, the same thing as saying everyone is fun is just like saying Abby is fun because she's the only person in the universe, right? The same goes with an existential statement, right? If I want to say someone's fun and there's uh, a bunch of people in my universe, I'd have to say, this person's fun, or that person's fun, or that person's fun, right? Somebody's fun, but I don't know who it is, so or, 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 or. However, if there's only one person in the universe, again, it's just, Abby's fun. So the way you expand a one-element universe for an existential is the exact same as a universal. But what happens if there's two people in your universe? So now there's Abby and Bill. Well, I want to say that everyone is fun, and there's two people in my universe, so I say Abby is fun, and Bill is fun, right? The exact same thing happens with existential. I want to say someone is fun, so I know that Abby is fun, or Bill is fun, right? It's the exact same process. The only thing that changes is the wedge to the dot. We use wedge when we expand existential. We use dot when we expand universal. So let's kick it up a step, right? The process doesn't change when we, ex when we expand slightly longer quantified statements. So for a one element universe, I would expand this, right? I do the exact same thing. I chop off the quantifier and I replace the variable X in this case with a name, A. So for a one element expansion, F A arrow H A. The exact same thing for existential. Remember, there's no difference for a one element universe between an existential and a universal. But what happens when I want to take it up a notch? Some people struggle with this, but basically the way I say when you want to do a two element expansion, right, you do an A version and you do a B version when it looks like this, when it's quantified by one variable, one quantifier. So we do the A version, F, A, arrow, H, A. Then we do the B version. F, B, arrow, H, B. And now we have to combine them together. And what symbol do we use? We use the dot because it's a universal. The existential looks pretty much the exact same way. We do the A version, F, A, arrow, H, A. Then we do the B version, F, B, arrow, H, B. And now we have to ask ourselves what to use to connect them. We use a wedge because it's existential. Right, So that's the basics of that. And if we were to do a three element, which we'll talk about why we might want to do that in a second, you would just do the C version and just tack it on again. Right? What about something that looks like this? Right? I've got, an, I've got not one quantifier, but two quantifiers. And this quantifier is only quantifying R, Y, and this is quantifier is only quantifying F, Z. How do I expand something like this? This throws people off, but it's really simple. The trick is you expand one side, and then the other. So we need to expand this quantifier, and we need to expand this quantifier. We expand each quantifier. So for a one element universe, it's really simple, right? That's a one element expansion of that quantifier. That's a one element expansion of that quantifier. No problem. But what about a two element expansion? Well, how would I do a two element expansion of just existential y, r, y? I would say r, uh, a, r, B, and I would combine those two with a wedge. 
How would I do a two element uh, quantification or expansion for FZ, universal Z, FZ? I would just say FA and FB. And that's all we do. We just wrap them up in parentheses and we bring down our arrow from the original line. So don't let two quantifiers throw you off. It's still really straightforward. So what do we do all that for? What's the point? Well, the point is we have to do a truth table, right? We have to do a truth table. So we have to expand our premises and then actually do a truth table based on what we have. So the, the standard thing is, you know, you always know that with this process, given enough expansions, it's going to be invalid. Maybe it'll take one expansion. If that doesn't work, try second expansion, two, two element expansion, three, four, five. So the point of this is not to check to see whether or not it's invalid. You know it's going to be invalid. The answer to these are invalid. You're just trying to demonstrate, hence the title, demonstrating invalidity. So we do a one element expansion on this. That's how you start every time. GA, arrow, tilde, EA, right? One element expansion. GA, and then the conclusion is just tilde EA, right? So now we do a truth table to see what we got. So there's four steps. There's four steps to doing a truth table, remember? Step one, F the conclusion, and T the premises. Man, I really got to learn how to spell. Uh, second step, fill in the conclusion. Step three, fill in the premises. And step four, check your work. So, let's start by step one. How do I make the conclusion false? Right, well, I put an F under the main connector of the conclusion, which is actually the tilde. How do I make the premises true? Right, I put a T under the main connectors of the premises. So we're all set there. We're done with step one. Step two, fill in the conclusion. Well, that's going to be really easy. If the tilde is false, then remember from the first test, the tilde is always opposite. So that would make EA true. So now I'm done filling in the conclusion because every symbol and letter has a letter under it. We don't put a letter under the A and a letter under the E, it's just that's grouped together. So we got that. Now we need to fill in our premises. Step three. So I, I play Wheel of Fortune to fill in my premises, right? If I know something's true in the conclusion, then I know it's true over here in the premises as well. So if I know EA is true there, then it has to be true there. And if I know GA is true here, I know it has to be true here. So the only thing left without a symbol under it is this tilde. And I know if EA is true, that makes the tilde false. So now I've filled in all my premises as well. And now I have to do step four, check your work. So can you have a false tilde and a true uh, uh, other part? Yes, this is good. Can you have, yes, a true premise? Can you have a true arrow with a true left side and a false right side? Well, remember our handy dandy truth charts. If you don't know these, you have to learn them. This is this is paramount importance. So just like from the first test, you can't do this without your truth chart. So can I have on an arrow T T F? Let me see. T T F T T F T T F T T F. No, this won't work. So because it didn't work on a normal truth test from, or on the normal truth chart from the first test, I would say, okay, done. Forget about it. This argument is valid. However, that's not going to work on this test. We have to do a two element expansion now. So all we basically do is we did a one element expansion. Now we need to bump it up to a two. So right, how do we expand that to a two element universe? We do an A version, GA, arrow, tilde, EA, and GB, arrow, tilde, EB. Right? That's our first premise. Our second premise is just GA or GB, right? Because that's that premise expanded. And the conclusion is tilde EA and tilde EB. 
right? So, ooh, it's just barely going to fit. Okay. So now the trick is we're going to do the exact same process all over again. So step one says make the conclusion false, easy enough, and make the premises true. Now, this has got a lot of things going on, but that dot, right, that's the main connector. So I've finished step one. Now I need to finish step two. I need to fill in my conclusion. Well, how many ways are there to make a dot false? Let me check. Uh, there's lots of ways to make a dot false. Oh, this should be a, this should be a false. Sorry. There's three different ways to make a dot false. So what that means is we're going to have to try every way. So if this side was true and this side was false, that would make the wedge false, the, the dot false. But also there's another combination we could try. There. We could try this side being false and this side being true, or we could try both sides being false. So I need to try them all the different ways. So what's next? Let's see. We go uh, to step three, which is fill in. Oh, and so basically, if I try this line and it doesn't work, then I need to try it this way and this way. So let's see. Just work the truth table out and see if we have to move on to the next line. Because once you find a winning line, once you find a winning combination, you can stop. So EA, if that's true, that's got to be false. And EB, if that's false, that's got to be true. So the conclusion is filled in, yeah. Everything's got a letter under it. Everything's got a T or an F under it. So now we move on to step three, fill in our premises. So I know if EA is false there, it's got to be false over here. And I know if EB is true, it's got to be true over here. And so now the question is just how we start filling it out. You can start wherever you want, but right, I wouldn't choose this because there's lots of different ways to make a, a, a GA true. So I always go where I'm forced to go. So in this case, right, a dot is true, and the only way a dot can be true, right, looking at our truth charts, is if both sides are true. So this arrow has to be true, and this has to be true. There's no divergence there. There's no other combination. So I like that because I, I know that there's no, there's no other way it could be. With this, it could go a lot of different ways, and I'd have to try it a lot of different ways. This, I know, has to be one way. So now I'm looking at my, okay, I'm looking at my first premise. Well, I know if EB is true, that makes the tilde false and that makes that true. So now I look over at this side, I have a true arrow with a true right side. So what does GA have to be? Well, according to my truth chart, it could actually be true or false. So I'll come back to that. What about this arrow? True uh, middle and a false right side. What does GB have to be? Well, there's no way it could be true. There's no such thing as TTF for my arrow. This has to be false, according to my truth chart. So that arrow is FTF, and that makes GB false, right? And so if, if I want a wedge that's true and I have a false right side, according to my truth chart, right, according to this guy, if the left side's false and I want a true arrow, that means GA has to be true. And if GA is true there, then it's true there. So everything worked out. I'm going to move on to step four. Check. Can I have a false dot? with a true left side and a false right side? Yes. Can I have a wedge that looks like that? Yes. Can I have a true uh, conjunction with a true left side and a true right side? Yes. Did I do everything in here right? Yes. So this is invalid. So the answer would be invalid. And don't forget to provide your invalidating sequence. GA equals true. GB equals false. Uh, EA equals false and E, B equals true. So that's the answer to this argument. Make sure you do a bunch of practice on the web tutor. It's a little tricky, but it's really not too bad. So good luck. Make sure you study your truth charts, and you'll be fine.